Hello there everybody, it's Sally here and welcome back to another Tuesday Teaching Tips with me, Sally Cathcart. Now, it's a Tuesday, it's raining out here, everybody's in lockdown here in the UK, children are at home and a lot of people are really struggling, we feel, to stay online and stay connected with their lessons and their learning. So, I'm going to see if I'm going to give you 10 ideas for online teaching and learning in 10 minutes that will hopefully give you some fresh inspiration to go in and go, yay! Because really, first of all, you've got to look after yourself. If you don't look after yourself, then we can't give to anybody else. So if we're feeling a bit down and a bit lackluster, which we all do from time to time, I know I'm standing here and looking nice and jolly, but believe you me, I have down moments as well. But if we can just look after ourselves, then our teaching will benefit and then our pupils will feel that love from us. So I'm just going to set my timer on my iPad and I'm going to um, see how many of these. I've got 10 ideas on here. I have 10 minutes maximum to deliver it. So are you ready? Steady? Here I go. So the first idea is that you want to make it really easy for your students to go to the piano. You don't want to make it hard for them to go and sit at the piano and do their piano. You want them to be able to just go there, run there almost, as a relief from being online. So that the pieces you give them keep the repertoire really balanced. Nothing too hard, nothing too challenging. Instead, keep it easy or well within their comfort zone because you will find actually if they learn lots of pieces think about the 40 piece challenge you know they will actually progress more their reading will become better their note reading will become more secure and therefore they will go off and be able to learn pieces by themselves what a joy so that's tip number one make it easy for your students to go to the piano make it easy keep that in mind number two have little routines that you develop of celebrating all the small wins that they might have. And I mean, you know, really, really small wins. And something I've started to do is when I've really enjoyed something, I do a happy dance. And my happy dance goes, it's that simple. Then I say, shall we do a happy dance together? Let's do it together. And we go back the other way. And yes, it's a very silly thing to do. But that's the point, isn't it? It gets you off the piano stool, it gets you laughing, and it changes the energy, just re, re, resets everything a little bit. So a happy dance, of course, if you're on Zoom, you can use emojis and stuff like that. And the smile on a student's face when they see that you've put up a big heart or a thumbs up or a clap, you know, that tells you the story that, yeah, they, they appreciate that. We want them to feel that love after all. Okay, number three, I think I'm doing all right at the moment. Be objective and specific when you are giving feedback to them. So in our one-to-one -one lessons, when we're face-to-face, -face, we tend to waffle on a little bit, I think, on giving advice. Whereas actually our students often know things. So what do I mean by being objective and specific? I like to use numbers. Most students, even adults, know 10 out of 10 what that means, you know. So... 10 out of 10 for your rhythm. Ah, oh, do you know, 10 out of 10 for that rhythm. Specific, I'm talking about the rhythm, I'm not talking about all the notes. You know, it might only be three out of 10 or five out of 10 for the, for the notes, but 10 out of 10 for the rhythm and eight out of 10 for keeping a really steady pulse. What might you do to get it to a 10 out of 10? And then they will usually be able to point out the place where they didn't quite get that rhythm right. So be specific and be objective, yeah? Don't make it personal, just be objective about it. It makes such a difference. Uh, number four, here we go. Number four is about improvising. Just gonna check for my time. Oh, how, how long? Oh, yeah, I've got plenty of time left. I'm gonna get there, I think. Um, improvise. I know you're online, but you can still improvise. And it might sound rubbish your end, but it will sound just fantastic their end. Get them maybe to, um, to to mute themselves. They nearly all know how to do that. Or you can leave it up if you want to. You've just got to be able to cope with um, the, the disconnect in the sound because, of course, the lag is still a problem. And set up just a simple pattern. And I got this idea from my good friend Lucinda Mackworth Young, who did it recently in a webinar. And um, I'm just going to take up uh, a little pattern that I use quite a lot. So it's an A minor, 
and a G major and then an F and then sometimes I come back to the G again and I just set that up as a little loop you can hear I add in a second and a little bit more and I just keep going just with the accompaniment you if they feel if they seem to be really secure you can add in your own little um, melody as well and it sounds so pretty when you do things like that just keep it really limited I was just playing E D and E D and C but obviously I can go up to an A as well and a G yeah anything around that really works so improvisation it's not off the menu completely you've just got to be adaptive and, and flexible with what happens actually that's another word flexible be flexible that was number four got to keep going number five doing what I'm doing standing up and moving actually I deliver a lot of my lessons standing up I stand up I sit down and um, but I don't keep sitting down I then stand up again because I find I have more energy when I do that but your students need to stand up as well so for example one thing you might do is you might play them a piece of music not a piece that they're going to learn necessarily just a piece that they are going to listen to now I've just been doing this over in Curious where we've been having a webinar looking at female composers and here I have got a minuet by um, Elisabetta Gambarini lovely minuet in A major and um, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to sit down when start by sitting down please and when you hear it playing piano you sit down when you hear me play forte I'd like you to stand up when you think I might be playing mezzo forte I want you to tap the beat on your shoulders okay I'm not going to play the whole piece because I haven't got time but I'll give you a little clue definitely haven't got time okay so here we go start by sitting down please so forth I would go on to the mezzo forte but and because you can see the pupil immediately you can see their responses and they love this sort of thing that was number five um number six similar use body I use your body for rhythm and pitch work I do an awful lot of showing where the pitches go on my body or I use a rhythm I might get them to clap um just a a, a simple quaver rhythm you know But rather than just do it all clapping, I might say, oh, can we click the quavers? Can you click? Off we go. I can't remember what the rhythm was I did now. Yeah? So the TTs, the, the quavers might go into my fingers or they might go on here or they might go on my nose. Give the pupil the choice of where they want to put them. That was number six. Number seven. This has been a great hit with my students this last week. I said to them, because I had a group session with everybody last week, I didn't give them individual because I didn't feel like it. So we had group sessions and lots of fun. I said to them, could you choose a piece and learn it yourself and play it to me next week? And you know, they've all absolutely adored it. It's been the first thing that they've wanted to do. Listen to my piece and I've had videos sent to me. So get them to choose a piece and play it to you next week another idea for them is to tell them to teach a piece to a member of the family who doesn't yet play the piano or who isn't quite as good as them yet again this is something that they really enjoy doing teach a piece to somebody else gives them a sense of responsibility as well um, I'm on question number nine which is good because I've got two minutes left 10 in 10 we're getting there we're getting there question um, number nine is ask the all question questions are so important we've talked about feedback being objective and specific in feedback the all question and what else that's it and what else and this is from a chap called Michael Bungay Stanya um, and the coaching habit and what else so when you say um, you know what what are the dynamics or what do you notice about the dynamics don't just take their first answer then say and what else do you notice and what else could you do and what else could you practice yeah brilliant question transforms lessons transforms it and the last point 
is to make best use of your time. I don't know about you, I prepare my lesson, I deliver my lesson, I update the notes for my students and I use something called Cadenza and all that takes time. So on Cadenza I have the ability to be able to put in videos or links to videos and at one point, this time last year, before we all went online, I was actually making all these videos and putting them in there. Now I find whatever videos I can. So use the resources that are out there that will help. So for example, if you're a piano safari person, there are tons of videos to help with the technique there. So rather than try to teach the technique in the lesson, put the video in there. Um, or piano adventures, again, there are videos there or my own series of Ready to Play, we have a YouTube channel and there are quite a few songs, an increasing number of songs on that YouTube channel for Ready to Play. So let's see if I can quickly recap. Make it easy for them to go to the piano. That was number one. Celebrate small wins in with little dances and silly things like that. Be objective and specific when giving feedback, maybe using numbers. Do some improvising at the piano. Stand up and move. Um, to get away from the uh, sitting all the time. Use the body for rhythm and pitch work. Get them to choose a piece that they want to learn and get them to play it to you next week. I'm going to keep going. Teach a piece to somebody else in your family who doesn't learn. Ask the or question and what else and what else. And to make the best use of your time, use the videos and any other resources that you can find that are out there. <sighs> I think I need to go and lie down in a dark place after that. Ten ideas. 10 minutes. Hopefully that's going to give you something to go on and re-energise you for this coming week and for the future weeks. Yeah, We'd love to see you over in the community of the Curious Piano Teachers. We've got a free month's trial. If you're needing help, if you're needing support, and we know we are all stronger because we are connected together and we can all both be positive about what we do but also we can say we're having a really rough time and we all are having a rough time okay we are all having a rough time so let's look after each other let's be kind and let's share the love with each other all right folks happy teaching bye bye